Here's to whiskey kisses, a peachy taste of sin. Greetings, whiskey folk, and welcome back to Drinking Out Loud. I'm your host, Adam Bradshaw, and I'm here in the Strath Studio to bring you some really good news. After months of waiting, it's here. It's here. The Strath Limited Edition Cask Strength Glen Farkless has finally arrived. You know, we actually announced this on my birthday, all the way back in March the 6th, and I was so excited, and we did, you know, obviously quite a few people were excited with us, we did a lot of pre-orders, um, and those pre-orders are available to pick up right now in the store, or if you uh, if you got uh, postage options when you placed the order, they are being shipped to you right now, um, which is very exciting. But yeah, way back in March the 6th, that is you know, before any of the uh, the COVID lockdowns that happened here in British Columbia that we're back in again right now. And uh, yeah, we I guess we were all blissfully ignorant of uh, what was going to happen to us, which, ah, oh, to go back. Um, but yeah, this is such a relief to have this in our hands. It's been delayed many times. For a while there, we didn't think it was even going to happen properly. It was... Uh, for a second, we were told it was going to be delayed until mid to late 2021. Um, then we were told that they couldn't figure out a way to do the uh, cast strength bottling process in a COVID friendly way for some reason. So maybe we'd have to go for a different whiskey altogether. Um, but no, it's here. It's finally here. Um, it's taken a long time and there's been a lot of changes to how, uh, how everything works. But <sighs> I finally get to open my first actually this is the first uh single malt scotch whiskey i've ever you know commissioned i've ever um brought in um which is this is a big moment for me i'm really looking forward to it but you know i've got to do it justice and i've got to i've got to you know do deal with this whiskey fairly and compare it like for like and and uh you know we'll uh, we'll have a bit of an explore of this whiskey shall we um so First off, Glen Farkless. Uh, what is Glen Farkless? Who is Glen Farkless? Why? Why is Glen Farkless? I don't know why Glen is Farkless, but uh, I'm glad Glen is Farkless. Glen Farkless is a traditional. Um, they could, like they call themselves a Highland Scotch whiskey distillery. Um, they they are in the heart of Speyside, but they predate Speyside being its own region. Uh, I think quite quite a lot. Um, they actually started in 1844, apparently, um, and actually George Grant, who we'll get into some George Grant stories later. Everyone's got a great George Grant story. Um, he actually uh, he actually said uh, recently in an interview that um, it's by his uh, recollection, Glen Farkless has survived 22 recessions in its lifetime. So hopefully it's uh, it's you know pretty COVID uh, you know safe as well. I don't think Glen Farkless is uh, is going anywhere, even though we're in you know, strange and worrying times right now. Um, but they are one of the only family-owned and family-run distilleries left in Scotland. Um, in a time when most distilleries are owned by giant conglomerates, these are one of the independent holdouts. And the Strath, believe it or not, is also still independent family-owned business. Uh, we're, you know, relatively large, of course. We've got the Sticky Wicket, the Strathcona Hotel, um, and the Rooftop and Big Bag Johns. But we're actually a small family-owned business, which a lot of people, um, a lot of people are shocked to find out so it's it's really nice that we get to uh, work together with another family-owned business on the other side of the uh, planet um, to come up with something so beautiful um so yeah it's been family-owned since 1898 when uh, their previous business partner um uh, the uh, patterson company actually went bankrupt i think 1898 is actually a great year for whiskey not only did it uh, give us um the fully independent glen farkless it's also the year when ardmore um was built as well so you know it's a it was it came into its own in a real sort of height of the whiskey industry, which is kind of nice. But, you know, what's important, not, you know, what's really important is not necessarily where they've been, but where they are today. And Glen Farkless today are just, you know, they're an incredible success story for whiskey. Um, when George was here last year, um, he was saying how, you know, his job isn't to sell whiskey anymore. His job is to allocate whiskey, <laughs> um, which makes us makes it even luckier that we have this this bottle here, um, because yeah, he there's 
they don't have any issue selling their whiskey. It's just a point of now of figuring out what the price should be and who should get it. Um, it is beloved the world over. Um, they, you know, they, they, they're interesting because they straddle an interesting line between um, some of their expressions being an absolute, you know, stalwart, you know, bargain that, you know, that's right in there um, with, uh, you know, uh, the, the really well-priced single malts. Um, and then there's the super premium stuff they put out, which is just eye-wateringly expensive these days. And like talking the family casks. And we actually did a family cask tasting here about four years ago now. Um, we brought in a whole bunch of family casks and they were great and I really enjoyed them. Uh, but we just, honestly, we can't afford to bring them in anymore. They've gone up in price so much that it's kind of, they've, they've outgrown us, um, which is good for them. Um, you know, I'm, I'm never one of, I'm not going to be one of these people that's going to bemoan people, bemoan companies for charging, um, you know, a lot of money for their whiskey, because if they're doing that, it means that that's what their whiskey's worth. Whiskey's intrinsic value is, you know, it doesn't have an intrinsic value, really. Whiskey is only worth what people are willing to pay for it, um, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but that being said, I'm really grateful that their core range has still managed to, um, has still managed to retain um, some incredible value. <sighs> I'm thirsty, I'm gonna have a drink. And before I crack into this limited edition, which I've never had before, and just now I'm realizing I'm terrified, what if it's no good, which I'm not actually terrified. I'm I'm, I'm feeling pretty safe on this one. I, tr I trust them fartless, uh, especially with their, uh, with their single molds rather than their single casks. Um, they have, I mean, not to say their single casks are, are bad, but their single, they're, they know what they're doing in the blending room. Um, when they're blending casks together, they are absolute geniuses at it. Um, all of, actually speaking of casks, all of the casks that go into any whiskey with the word Glenfarclas on it are 100% European oak. And it's all actually from, apparently from one Cooper in Jerez, uh, Miguel Martin. I probably butchered the pronunciation. I just realized I said it with a weird French accent and it's Spanish. Uh, Miguel Martin, I guess, in, in my accent. Um, but yeah, um, they are, you know, one of the, the, the true holdouts of the traditional style of, of whiskey from back, back in the day when sherry casks were pretty much the only thing that was being used for a long time because of the, uh, you know, because of how much sherry was being drunk in the UK mostly. Um, so we're going to, first of all, go for the regular 12 year old before we dive into the cast strength. Um, this is, like I said, a fantastic um, sort of regular edition, uh, pretty much always available. Uh, it's currently 89.48, I believe, um, in the store, which is just a stupidly good price for, for this kind of whiskey. And uh, let's revisit it so we have a benchmark to compare our version with, shall we? Beautiful, oops, careful now. Lovely. Mmm. Yeah. Classic honey cherry on the nose. The nose of Glen Farkless is, uh, is a fun thing because one of my uh, former colleagues and very good friend, uh, Emily Decourt, always mentions the, uh, I think that she calls it the snout, the Glen Farkless snout. Um, I, I have never seen her fail at. Um, in a blind tasting, figuring out if something's a Glen Farkless or not. Um, whatever whatever it is, which she, she can't quite describe, which is why she calls it a snout, I think. Um, there's a key characteristic to a Glen Farkless which makes it different from every other whiskey. Hmm. Yeah, it's a little... It's like pine, pine resin. Ah, it's got a lovely nose. So whilst I'm uh, enjoying and calibrating myself with this regular 12-year-old, um, um, let me tell you about how we ended up with, with this guy. So George Grant is an absolute wonderful madman. Um, he takes on the role of the international brand ambassador basically for his family business and travels the world, uh, meeting people and talking about his whiskey and just being an all around incredible ambassador for, for his family business. Um, and turns out he quite likes this place. Uh, a couple of years ago, I first met George when he did a tasting. <laughs> we did a tasting down in the uh, what was formerly District Nightclub. 
Um, and uh, <laughs> just before the tasting started, the power went out, so we had to uh, we had to start the tasting at least by candlelight, which was slightly worrying with so much cast strength whiskey floating around, but uh, it certainly made it memorable. Uh, but one of the most memorable things about that trip was uh, having uh, having having a cigarette with George. I, I don't generally smoke, but I was a little stressed at the power going out. Uh, waiting for the candles to all get lit, I went upstairs and had a cigarette outside um, <laughs> outside the nightclub with George Grant and had a chat with him. And then we actually ended up going for a drink in Big Bad John's. Turns out George Grant loves Big Bad John's, as does Leon Webb. Um, uh, the, and probably many other people in the whiskey industry. We're weirdly drawn to it. I don't know why. Um, and yeah, uh, had a great time. And then just last year, he came back and we did another wonderful tasting. Actually, for the Drams for Fams, we did a charity tasting and raised, oh God, I can't even remember how much, a couple of thousand, I think, uh, but quite a lot of money for the uh, Drams for Fams charity. Um, and we actually had uh, lunch together up on the rooftop. And I introduced him to the Mexican Bulldog, which he um, enjoyed. He really quite enjoyed that Mexican Bulldog. And then again, we ended up in Big Bad John's afterwards with the, uh, with the, the rep now for Glen Farkas here in Victoria, Rich. And uh, Rich, thank you for all of the work you've put into getting this bottle here, by the way. I, I am um, indebted to you. I truly am. Uh, Rich Whitwell, incredible job. And hopefully your bosses are watching this video. So if I say your name enough times and say incredible job, maybe they'll give you a raise. I don't know. I don't know if it works that way. Um, but yeah, we we hatched a plan right then and there to try and make our our own uh, our own whiskey happen, and damn it, we we finally made it happen. Uh, George was actually originally going to come here for the launch. It was supposed to be back in May. Um, that's how you know that's how long we've been uh, waiting for this to finally hear, uh, come. Um, it was actually well in the process of, uh, of of everything by the time we announced it in March. We thought, yeah, we'll announce it in March, then, you know, it's a couple of months of pre-orders, and then we'll have a, a launch party in May, and George Grant's going to come in and actually uh, come and launch it with us in person. It's going to be wonderful. Little little did we know. Um, but yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's the 12 I know and love. That's... Mm. Toffee apples and toffee apples soaked in sherry. It's just just a beautifully classic whiskey. It really is. There's, there's very little that touches it. I mean, there's a huge push these days to have um, a, a relatively inexpensive, um, you know, big sherried whiskey. And I often don't recommend Glenfarclas for that. Um, and it's, it's not that I don't think Glenfarclas, you know, is fantastic, because I obviously do, but it's not the massive sherry bomb that people seem to weirdly be looking for these days. So, it's, you know, it's not your Glendronach 12, it's not your Tamdu 10. Um, it's sherry that's not been... It's not... They haven't abused the sherry, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, it's a nice, healthy mix of, uh, of, of uh, first fill, second fill, refill. Um... And it's it's a balanced, beautifully orchestrated sherry. It's it's not just sherry. There's there's different levels of sherry within this, um, and it plays so harmoniously with the spirit itself um, that this isn't a sherry bomb. This is just a, a sherry quartet, maybe. Mm. But yeah, absolutely classic, classic, beautiful whiskey. Let's see. I'm gonna keep that in frame there a little bit. All right, so we have our starting point. I've recalibrated and reminded myself what the regular Glenfarclas 12 is like. Let's let's do it. Let's try the official oh, cask strength 12 year old bottled for the Strath. Comes in a nice fancy little box. First thing to notice, of course, is in the the smoked glass. Maybe I should read the back of the box. I, I, I've been doing this uh, quite a lot on videos recently and learning that I don't read the back of the box very often because I often learn something by reading it. So let's see. This is not just a bottle of Highland malt. It is the result of over 180 years of tradition and experience of secrets carried and nurtured through six generations of my family here in the heart of Speyside. 
Many have wondered at the origins of the unique taste of Glenfarclas. Some believe the secret lies in the tumbling waters of the green burn married with fresh highland air. Others believe it is our great copper stills, which continue to be direct fired. And some believe the secret is my family's uncompromising commitment to maturing Glenfarclas in the best oak casks in traditional Dunnage warehouses. Wherever the secret lies, we invite you to share in enjoying and savouring Glenfarclas. From uh, John Ellis Grant. I think it's probably a mix of all three of those. Um, I think the, the glory of Glenfarclas is not in one part of the process, but um, in how they treat the whiskey with uh, with respect and uh, with the, yeah, and they treat it really well throughout the entire process. And here it is. That's, uh, there you go, have a, have a little side by side. As you can see, we have our very own illustration, um, which was done by local artist Wes Dunlop. Um, I'll put a link in the in the show notes to be able to uh, check out Wes Dunlop's other work. And if that uh, surname sounds familiar, um, it is actually Patrick Dunlop's uh, brother. Um, so Pat Dunlop, who is my colleague here at the Strath, who uh, used to run the SNWS before I did, um, and is back with us temporarily right now. Uh, yeah, that's, that's his brother, uh, who designed the label for, for this whiskey, which is pretty cool. Um, what can we learn from the label? Well, it says Cask Strength Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, age 12 years. Um, as a... Uh, as the same as the other one, it will say distilled and bottled by J and G Grant, Glenfarclas Distillery, Speyside, Scotland, product of Scotland. Has a big Strath sticker on it because uh, well, it's not a sticker; it's just a circle. Um, but most importantly, whereas the regular version is forty three percent, this is fifty eight point six. Yes, we say cast strength. It is good, high cast strength. I am really looking forward to trying this one. It's also says on the back, in case uh, you weren't already aware, bottled for the Strath, has the Strath logo and the Dram Association logo here as well, which I'm very proud of. Ah, cool, the spirit of independence. Age 12 years. Let's see if I can open her up. The first ever one of these bottles to be opened. Nice foil lid. And here we go. Mm, that felt good. Guess I should get a glass. Actually, you know what? I'm going for the crystal. It deserves it. It's a momentous occasion. Right on. All right. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Okay. Let's put this front and center. Move this one back a little. Maybe not quite that far. And there we go. Okay. Okay. That is more different than I was expecting on the nose, actually. That is pralines. That is, you know, mm, that is hazelnut and chocolate. That is lovely. Yeah. Still, you know, strong on the sherry notes, but yeah, the, the hazelnut and chocolate notes are just, mm, just reaching through at me right now. Oh yeah, it's, it's such a deeper, richer nose. All right, well, I'm going in. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Oh, wow. It's still there. Wow. That is a never ending whiskey. I can still taste it in my mouth. That is. Oh. That is just beautiful. It's rich and creamy. It's custody almost. It's. Uh, there's, Mmm, banana and walnuts. It's like a yeah, it's like a walnut banana cake, banana loaf. Oh, my, that is, mmm, quite quite the step up. That is, I mean, no offense to the twelve. It's a gorgeous whiskey, but it 
yeah, that is that is the uh, the starter, and this is the main course. This is just glorious. Oh wow, I am so relieved. I knew it wasn't going to be bad. I knew it was going to be good. I just didn't know how good. And I am. I am so, so satisfied with how this turned out. Oh yeah. No, no weird surprises on this one. This is just beautiful cask strength Glenfarclas. Oh yeah, that is. Mm. And you know, it's the funniest thing. Glen Farkless, we've had a couple of really interesting, uh, I just realized George might watch this video, so I, I shouldn't, I should be careful. We've had some, uh, some whiskies that might have been Glen Farkless uh, earlier this year from different independent bottlers. Um, and it's, it's interesting because almost always whenever you uh, get a Glen Farkless that might, well, that a, a, a potential Glen Farkless from an independent bottler, um, it always lacks that little something. Um, that that makes it like it's not quite normal Glen Farkless. It's usually really, really, really good. It's high quality whiskey, but it doesn't have that characteristic. And I think that's why some whiskey leaves the distillery. You know why they don't? Because as I said, they don't have any issues selling their whiskey. It's all about just making you know spreading the love, really. Um, so yeah, it's. Uh, I think the only reason that we see independently bottled Glen Farkless is when Glen Farkless got casts and they're like, yeah, this is good. Um, it's you know. It's too good to be just blended away into something, but it's not its not the right profile for us. This is just a beautiful, stunning example of a cask strength, full flavored whiskey with that absolute Glen Farkless fingerprint all over it. <sighs> and normally to get an official bottling cask strength Glen Farkless, um, under most circumstances, you'd probably be looking at a, a family cask, uh, especially if you're looking for an age statement, because there is one exception, and that is the third part of, uh, of this, because it's not it's not enough just to compare it to the 12, because yes, this is a cask strength 12-year-old, and the difference there is that it's, you know, cask strength, but there's another Glen Farkless, which is widely available as cask strength, because they actually kind of started the whole movement of official modeling cask strength whiskies. And you probably know where I'm going with this. The Glenfarclas 105, a whiskey so popular, there's even a bar named after it in, I think, Hong Kong. Um, yeah, stunning, award-winning cask strength Glenfarclas, but it's not 12 years old. It's uh, it's quite a bit younger than that. I, um, I forget, I believe I was told how old this was, and I think I know, but I don't think I'm allowed to say. I, but it's less than, it's quite a bit less than 12. Um, but let's see how the cast strength 12 compares with their regular cast strength offering here and oh it's actually a unopened bottle did not realize this let's pop her open then very very nice okay i've only got one crystal blank and i'm sorry 105 you're getting a regular but I've got one crystal, crystal glinka in my office. I've got plenty more at home. So, Glen Farkless 105. Hmm. So my thing with 105, um, it's 60% ABV, by the way. Uh, the 105 is referring to naval proof, not uh, not the kind of proof that is common here in America, which is why it's 60%, not uh, whatever half of 105 is, 52.5. Um, it's 60% ABV, which means it's theoretically... Uh, not theoretically, factually, 1.4% um, um, higher than our exclusive 12-year-old. Hmm. Oh, and it tastes so much rawer and punchier as well. That's one of the things I love about the 105 is it's such... It doesn't pull any punches. It's... Um, I don't want to say aggressive. Um, I would, it's, it's definitely not aggressive as a whiskey, but it's certainly unadulterated. Um, it's the perfect whiskey for um, if you're wanting to um, use it. I mean, <laughs> uh, in maybe a, a cocktail, and you want you really want the scotch to uh, to shine through. Um, 
And it's the perfect whiskey for folks who like cask strength whiskey and and want that high proof, but don't want to spend, you know, a couple of hundred bucks. In fact, this is only one twenty two ninety six normally. Um, great price. Great whiskey. Um, yes, there's a reason it has a fan following. Actually, when we had George Grant in, he did some bottle signings for people. Um, and I think the vast majority of the bottles that uh, people were getting him to sign were the 105. This has a huge fan base, which is why I was so excited to be able to bring in a cast strength uh, Glen Parkless. Because, yeah, I mean, this is just a, just a modern classic. It truly is. Ah, just beautiful. So, how does it compare to our new Strath exclusive? It's, the 105 is is nutty on the nose, and that's kind of like the, the big difference, as I said, um, that I always notice in the profile between that and the 12. Uh, but I, I wouldn't say it's the chocolate praline kind of a nuts. It's much more Big Bad John's peanuts. No, uh, no, it's much more of a um, peanut butter, I think. And possibly coffee. Yeah, this one's sweeter. Yeah, this one's definitely a little, a little sweeter, a little more honey. A little, I think a touch more sherried as well. More of those, uh, more of those European oak, specifically European oak. No American oak apparently as well in the uh, in the cast that they get coopered over in Hareth. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, it's 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 got so much more depth to it. The one hundred and five weirdly tastes like slightly more burny <laughs> than the uh, like. A, it tastes like it's a lot more than one point four percent ABV high, uh, higher. Um, it make yeah, drinking the the Strath uh, exclusive twelve year old makes the one hundred and five. Tastes a little rougher than it actually is, I think, um, which speaks to how well crafted this twelve-year-old is. At fifty-eight point six, it drinks very, very pleasantly. Yeah. Well, you've heard me waffle on probably long enough now. Um, I am just so excited that this whiskey's finally here. As I mentioned, for anyone who's already placed a uh, who will. You know, placed a pre-order on this whiskey uh, for pickup in store. It's available right now. Come down and get it. Um, we, if if you need us to to do a um, a curbside pickup, then just you know pull up outside the store, give us a call, we'll bring it to your car. Um, and yeah, I've also actually for for those of uh, those of our regular customers that uh, take advantage of our uh, local delivery options, our three dollar delivery or five dollar delivery, depending where you are in town. Feel free to um, to just uh, wait until the next time you place an order online and ask us to add your Glen Farkless to that order. So you know, if you're doing your weekly weekly beer shopping and you you know you need your six pack of Blue Book um, and your bottle of wine, um, just tell us uh, you know pay three bucks to get it delivered and tell us to include the uh, Glen Farkless and then you don't have to make the trek down here as well. And for those of you, as I mentioned, who did um, order it with shipping, then it is on the way. It will be uh, it will be delivered to you quite soon. Mm. But for those of you who did not place a pre-order, it is available right this second. It is available right now at strathlicker.com. And I'm launching this video before the store even opens. It'll also be available in person when the store opens at 10 o'clock this morning, um, uh, while stocks last. And uh, we actually have quite a bit of this. Uh, we actually got 300 bottles made. Um, we were that confident. and. Over a hundred of those have already been sold in pre-orders, um, which, uh, yeah, I don't know how long this is going to be around. Probably not too too long. Uh, don't sit on it for, for too long. It is available right now, though, for one forty seven seventy three is the regular price. But of course, if you are a premium subscriber, uh, sorry, premium member, or perhaps if you're an SNWS uh, member, um, you can get it with your 10% discount. Uh, remember, only Dram Association Premium members can get the discount right now online. If you're an SNWS member and you want your 10% discount, you have to come and visit us in store, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, with 10% off, it's only 132.97, which makes it actually only 10 bucks more than the Glenfarclas 105, which is pretty cool. 
yeah, I am really happy. Um, I already bought three bottles. Um, so I guess technically there's 297. Actually, no, we also gave one to the artist as well. So 396, they keep going down there. Oh, and we pre-sold 106. So yeah, we're already, we're, you know, we're, we're almost halfway through. Don't delay, pick up your Straff exclusive. Glenn Farkless, cast strength 12 year old while you can. It's been a hell of a year and this is a hell of a way to celebrate that year coming to an end. We'll uh, see you again very shortly. Uh, we've got some Blackadder coming up in just a few days. I'll see you then. Here's the whiskey kisses, the peachy taste of sin.